Hi, and welcome to the third video in our Proxmox series. So in the first video, we set up our Proxmox virtual environment. And in the second video, we brought up a Windows Server 2025 box using the best practices. Of course, because there are some different configurations that we have to set up for Windows, especially when it's running on top of a Linux kernel and a Debian environment. Um, so there is a little bit of additional setup there. So if you guys want to set up a Windows server, please go check out that video. This video, we are going to be focusing on configuring a Ubuntu server. Um, we are going to be uh, configuring it with the best practices, once again, similar to Windows. These best practices, though, are usually a lot more uh, default. There's a few things that we're going to be changing and adding in. Um, but for the most part, uh, Proxmox does a pretty good job at just the default being really good um, for an Ubuntu setup compared to Windows, where it does require a little bit of extra work because the Vert IO drivers need to be installed separately. Whereas for the Ubuntu, you don't need to do any of those extra installs. So it's a little bit easier to go about that. So the first thing that we're going to uh, go ahead and do is, of course, get our ISO. Um, so again, you're going to open up your favorite browser and your favorite um, search engine and then just type in Ubuntu server download and then it should be the first link at the top and then you're going to hit the download for me right now. It is 24.04.2 LTS, which is the long term support. So we're going to go ahead and click on download and then all we're going to do is I usually like to either hit um, stop there or just cancel that download and what we're actually going to want to do is right click the download now button and hit copy link come back to our proxmox come on to this local environment local here click on the iso images and then download from the url you're going to want to paste that in there and then hit query url you're going to see that it is actually going to download that ISO. And if you hit download, for me, it's not going to work uh, because I already actually have that file on our system here. So I did uh, remove the Windows ISO and the BERT IO drivers here. So in case you are coming from that second video here, you will see uh, that I basically deleted everything that we did on that video um, just for this video for the Ubuntu ones. So what we're actually going to go ahead and do is we're going to go back to our primary window here and we are going to click on create VM. And here you're going to leave the VM ID. Usually the pre-generated one is perfectly fine. And we are going to name our server here. So I'm going to do the Ubuntu uh, 2404-BP for best practices here. And we're going to click on next and here for the os we are going to go ahead and pick our iso for the guest os we're going to leave that as linux and the 6.x or 2.6 kernel and we're going to click on next for the system here graphics card i like to leave it at default and the machine we're going to leave it at default bios we're going to leave it at default for the SCSI controller, I do like putting that still to the Vert IO SCSI, and I do enable the Kimu agent. Now, that we will actually be taking a look at a separate video here for that Kimu agent. Just by checking this box, it doesn't do anything, uh, but we also checked the box for our Windows server. Um, but we're actually going to take a look at what that actually does in a future video. These videos are just purely getting that VM set up and running. Uh, so we're going to click on next here and for this on the disk here we're going to want to make sure that we enable the ssd emulation so it's going to mimic a ssd instead of a spinning drive and we're also going to want to check box the discard which is going to trim the unused space on our hard drive so it's just a little bit handy especially for a home lab environment even in a production environment, you're definitely going to want to use this discard option. Also, what we're going to be doing with these machines is just to let you know, maybe you're going to want to spin up a separate VM for this, is we're going to be able to make golden images with our Windows and with our Ubuntu, 
which is going to make spinning up virtual machines in the future a lot easier and a lot more automatable. Um, so we're going to be able to spin machines up, give them an IP address, give them a user, give them a bunch of info, and it's just going to spin up a new VM with that information. So that's going to be really, really cool. Um, so just make sure that you use this discard because that will be handy, um, especially if your hard drive space is limited. We're, and that's also going to be the point for the Kimu agent as well um, is going to be useful for that as well. So for the CPU, I never like to give anything under two cores personally. Um, for the type here again, um, again, in our environment, it's pretty much dependent on if you are going to be using this in a cluster or not. Um, so if you're going to be using this in a cluster, I would recommend for Linux environments, usually KVM 64 is fantastic. Um, if you do know that all of your uh, machines that are going to be hosting Proxmox have the same CPU, you can use host in a production environment where you know you're buying all of your servers that are going to be hosting Proxmox. Usually at the same time, you know you're going to have the exact same CPU, then you can definitely select host. Um, but even then, let's say you do buy all of them at the same time one of them blows up and that model is not available anymore and that CPU is not going to be the same, live migrations are now no longer going to work to that host because it has a different CPU. So you kind of always want to emulate um, a CPU in this case. So in our case for our Linux machines, we're going to select KVM64 and we're going to click on next. Um, for RAM here, you don't need a whole lot on Ubuntu servers, we're going to leave it as two gigs, which is the default. We're going to leave the ballooning device as enabled and the network. We're going to leave this exactly as default. We're going to leave the bridge and the model as a BERT IO para virtualized. And we're going to click on next. And we are not going to check the box start after created because there's actually one more modification that we have to do that we just can't do on this actual screen just yet. So we're going to hit finished here and it's going to actually bring up our VM here. So what we can actually do is then click on options for our virtual machine. And there will be a option here called use tablet for pointer. And that by default is going to be set to yes. We're going to want to click on edit here and uncheck this because that will just use up a lot of resources and we do not need to do that at all. Um, especially on Ubuntu server, it's going to be hogging resources for no reason. So set that to no and you will be good to go. And we're going to go back to our console here and we're going to hit start now. And what this is going to do, this is going to boot up our environment and we're going to be able to actually try or install Ubuntu server. So let's go ahead and let's hit enter here. Now this is again a pretty straightforward setup at this point now we've already configured all of our settings on the proxmox virtual machine so this will be a pretty simple um, setup here so once we actually go through all of this it's just going to bring us to the install screen shortly And here it is. So here we're going to set up our language. So I'm going to pick English here and we are going to leave the keyboard layout to English as well. We're going to hit done. Um, we are going to set up the Ubuntu server. Now, a lot of people will actually say to do the Ubuntu server minimized. This is definitely handy. Again, if you are more limited on your space. Um, or if you really, really want your Ubuntu server to serve a single purpose, um, especially with what we're going to be doing later with the cloud in it, um, where you're going to be able to use those golden template images. Like I said, it does make it a lot nicer for us. We're just going to do the Ubuntu server because I like to kind of maybe for future videos, we're going to need some of those additional um, packages here. Uh, so we're going to hit done. And we're just going to leave the um, IP set up the exact same. 
for me. I'm just going to memorize this. So right now it is a dot 101 IP address. So that is perfect because what I want us to do is actually test connecting it through putty or any of your favorite SSH um, terminals. We're going to hit done here. Proxy address, you can leave that blank um, if you do not need a proxy to connect to the internet. And it's going to actually go ahead and test downloading the mirror location. I'm just going to leave that as is. It's already set to the Canadian one, so it should be the fastest one. And the mirror location um, passed its test, so we can hit done here. Um, for the storage configuration, we are going to want to use the entire disk. Set up this disk as an LVM group. That is perfectly fine. We're going to hit done. And we can just go ahead and actually hit done here as well. And we can hit continue. And then our name. So we're just going to put jacked programmer here. For our server name here, um, let's do a jacked dash Ubuntu dash BP for best practices. Um, our username is going to be jacked. And then our password here. You're just going to put in a nice secure password and then hit done. And we are going to skip the Ubuntu Pro. Um, this is uh, basically a way to make sure that you get all the security updates and everything like that. I do believe that this is a cost uh, subscription. Not 100% sure on that, but the default is skip for now. We're just going to actually skip that here. And then we are going to actually install the open SSH server. This is very handy because it'll let you SSH into this server afterwards. So you don't have to come in to Proxmox to actually manipulate it. So we're going to um, hit the space bar on that box to tick it. And we're going to hit done here. And for the featured server snaps here, we're actually just going to go right to the bottom and just hit done. If you did want to set up something in here, you can definitely set it up. But like I said, we're going to be doing this more as like a golden template. Um, so this would be something that you would do on a VM that you then bring up afterwards. Uh, we're going to hit done here and we're just going to wait for this install. So this install can take a few minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the recording and we're going to come back when it, it all completes. All right, so it is all done here. So we can actually just go ahead and hit the reboot now button here. Now what this is actually gonna require us to do is you will see it very quickly appear. Um, we need to unmount the CD or eject the CD. So we're gonna to have to go into hardware here. And all I actually like to do is click on the CD DVD drive and hit remove instead of Egypt, like just removing the ISO. We won't need the CD or DVD drive from now on. Uh, so we can actually just go ahead and remove it all together. And we can go back to our console here and we will see that the Proxmox now goes back and it will boot up into our server here. So let's just wait a few little seconds here and it'll boot up and we can log in. And then what I will do is I will use putty to then SSH into that server just to show you guys that we can actually log into it. So um, let's just put in our username here. So our username was jacked and then our password here was that. And here, if I just type in IP space address here, it will give us our IP address, which we can see right here, which is the 101, like I mentioned previously. So let's just go ahead and open up putty here and let me just bring this over to the screen so you guys can actually see it. Here we are. Here we are. Give me one second here. We are just going to type in the IP address here. 192.168 dot 50 dot 101 and we are going to be connecting on port 22 that is the default port here we're going to click on open and then you should get this little pop up here the first time which is the security alert 
asking you to make sure that you want to accept or just connect once. We're going to hit accept because we know it is the correct system here. And then you will get this little um, SSH putty window here. And we can type in jacked as the user. And then our password, which will be this. And there we have it. We are on that same machine. We can see that it is jacked Ubuntu-BP here. So that is actually perfect. Um, and let me actually just show you guys that uh, CD-ROM just one more because I did notice that I think my head was in the way uh, during that here. So on hardware here, you would click on the CD DVD drive and then hit remove and then you would just go back to your console and then your server will be rebooting. I apologize. I did notice that my head was in the way. I must have just hit something accidentally on the OBS there, um, but everything should be good now. You guys will have a Ubuntu server on your Proxmox machines as well as a Windows server. Uh, so now feel free to basically install any operating system um, that you'd really want because you have these steps for pretty much any Windows server. Um, basically, the uh, Vert IO drivers, you know, based on that video, you would just select the proper 2K version or Windows 11 version of those drivers, and you'll be good to go. As far as Linux based machines, if you want to install Red Hat Linux, uh, Debian, um, Arch Linux, uh, Fedora, anything like that, you can pretty much use the exact same settings as we did in Ubuntu. The setup itself will be a little bit different um, because it won't be the Ubuntu installer. Um, but for the virtual machine settings, they will work just as well. So that should be all good to go. In the next couple videos, we're going to be taking a look at the Kimu agent. I'm not sure if I'm actually pronouncing that correctly, um, but the Kimu agent and the cloud init. Um, which is really going to let us take our Proxmox to the next level. Um, and anything else that you guys would also like to see, I know that we already got some comments on the last couple videos to see how to bring up things using the APIs. And we're definitely going to be taking a look at that. I just rather get the GUI things out of the way first, um, which is usually how people are most comfortable uh, manipulating new systems. And then we're going to be taking a look at the API routes to create virtual machines um, and containers if we can get there and if it is uh, wanted to do the containers as well. Um, and hopefully you guys enjoy that. And if there's anything else that you guys would like to see, please let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out and I will see you guys on the next video.